So it's Dublin 20 points, Kildare 1-9 at Crow Park. Dublin are Leinster senior football champions for 11th year in a row, for an 11th year in a row, which just sounds weird. It sounds crazy even putting it that way. Dublin in the end winning out by 20 points to 1-9, an 8-point victory for the Dubs at Crow Park. I did record this live straight after the game, but unfortunately a, lot, a number of uh, internet issues there, so we've had to, uh, I've had to go ahead and record this again, unfortunately, as the, my internet cut out completely there halfway through that uh, video, which was very annoying, but sure, look, We'll, uh, we'll make it again, we'll discuss it again. Dublin in the end winning uh, by 8 points, beating Kildare at Crow Park. Dublin not at their absolute best, nowhere near their absolute best once again. You would wonder, maybe is it, you know, certainly for, for Mayo fans, Kerry and Tyrone, whoever, uh, you know, eventually progresses on to All-Ireland Finals and whatnot. Well, it will obviously be Mayo next for the Dubs in an All-Ireland semi-final. You would wonder, though, from, from a Dublin point of view, like, once again, not at their absolute best. It was better. It was better than the Mead game, and it was better than the um, than the Wexford game. Managing the game was brilliant, just kind of taking the sting out of the game, playing it from side to side, you know, slowing Kildare down, you know, taking the attack out of, uh, or taking the tread out of Kildare's attack at different stages was absolutely brilliant. And it wasn't vintage Dublin, and, th and it didn't need to be. Like, Dublin didn't need to be at their best in this game. They were always in control. They always had that lead. And unless Kildare had done something magical, which they looked like they might have done when Daniel Flynn scored that goal and brought it to within four points. Obviously, a brilliant goal from Daniel Flynn. Made a mug out of Mick Fitzsimons. Hammered it into the, uh, into the top right corner of Evan Comerford's goal. There was four points in it from there. But Kildare didn't score again after that. I think they kicked a point, actually, after that. Um, and that was about it. You know, they needed to do a little bit more. They needed to offer a bit more. They needed to really run at Dublin, really just try and, and try something different. Like in the Mead game, for example, in the second half, Mead tried something different. Like they got their wing backs forward. They really went at Dublin. They really took the game to Dublin and they said, look, listen, you know, we might get B here, but we'll get B fighting. We didn't see that in this game from Kildare, in my opinion. They just didn't have that same energy as, as what Mead showed in the, in the Dublin game. And like Kildare in particular, 36% accuracy in the first half. You know, 5 out of 14 scores. You know, 5 scores from 14 scoring opportunities or 14 scoring chances. Like, that's just not going to win you a Leinster title. And that's probably not going to win you the majority of the games that you play. And I think this has been a common theme in the Leinster Championship down the years where... Like, because it's Dublin and because there's so much pressure, like, not necessarily on the counties that are coming up against Dublin, but it's just such a big game. It's such a big opportunity. And, like, you know you need to be scoring the majority of the chances that you get. Like, you need to be hitting, you know, 80 to 90% of your chances, realistically, if you're going to go and beat Dublin. And I think maybe that kind of lingers in players' minds. And, and maybe that's why sometimes we see the likes of your Meads and your Calderas produce quite underwhelming performances against the dubs whereas when they're playing the lesser counties they really stand up and, and show what they can do so yeah look listen it wasn't brilliant from from kildare from a dublin point of view you know once again nowhere near the the absolute best you know once again probably not at the races nowhere near you know our absolute best and like just at different times like the fluency doesn't seem to be there in attack we don't seem to be moving the ball as, as quick as what we want to the passing doesn't quite seem to be there at different stages in terms of creating more options or creating more spaces. We see we're moving it from side to side, and and it's just it's just not at the best at the minute. And I can't really put my finger on it. I don't really know what it is. And maybe Dublin will will turn up against Mayo and, and shoot the lights out and kind of produce the the top class performance that um that that maybe we're expecting. But look in terms of Dublin's performers on the day, five five points from Dean Rock. Like, hitting a couple of frees. He didn't miss a free in this game, which was positive. It looked more like the Dean Rock of of old. Um, he did get taken off kind of late on in the, in the in the second half or, you know, around about the 54th minute. Didn't look too happy when he came off as well. Like, you would wonder, is there something going on behind the scenes there between Dean Rock and Desi Farrell? You know, Dean Rock didn't play a league game at all. Uh, came off the bench against Wexford, started the game against Mead, but looked nowhere near his best. And you would just wonder, like, you know, maybe is Desi kind of thinking, like, Dean Rock is getting a lot older here, and maybe he wants to put his own stamp on the team. Like, and I think that's that would be a very worrying in my point of view, because Dean Rock, like, in full flight, not only is he one of the best you know free kick takers or place ball takers or whatever you want to call it like he is brilliant in front of goal at just getting into those scoring chances like how many times have we seen Dean Rock fist the ball into the back of the net where Dublin you know march forward almost create a bit of a triangle and whether it's Niall Scully or Brian Fenton just offloading it into into Dean Rock who would then fist it into the back of the net like in the All-Ireland Final against Mayo in the in the opening 10 seconds when we scored that goal so 
It would be a worry. Con O'Callaghan certainly hasn't been at his absolute best either. You would wonder, is he nursing a bit of an injury? Just one point in the game. Didn't score at all in the mead game. There was one opportunity as well where he was running through and he dropped the chance uh, short into the uh, Kildare goalkeeper. Uh, Donnellan's hand and you would wonder like is he nursing a bit of an injury maybe is that why he's not like covering as much ground he doesn't seem to be like beating players when he has the ball when he has the ball he, he offloads it to one of the other Dublin forwards he doesn't seem to be running in behind or, or trying to create a, you know more scoring opportunities or more scoring chances so like I mean look listen that's total speculation from myself there but you would just wonder is there something else going on there because maybe he's trying to save himself for an all Ireland semi-final or final you know maybe he, he tweaked his hamstring in training and it just hasn't got out you know you just wouldn't know so um, certainly a little bit worries there like if Conor Callaghan isn't on it you know if Dean Rock isn't on it all of a sudden for Mayo for Kerry they don't seem to have that same worry in defence as, as to what they did have previously uh, Kieran Kilkenny was man of the match in my opinion for Dublin hit four points did hit a couple of chances wide in the first half like certainly not at his uh, at vintage Kieran Kilkenny like as opposed to uh, the second half where he really did come in, come alive kicked one or two brilliant scores and uh, I think what was most impressive from Kieran Kilkenny was just that ability to slow the game down to pick a pass to wait for the right opportunities in front of him be it a Con O'Callaghan Dean Rocker or Cormac Costello he picked Cormac Costello out a couple of times for some brilliant points as well so I was uh, I was very impressed with him I think James McCarthy had a brilliant game for, for Dublin as well he was brilliant in the fence in the second half he won a lot of kickouts. Um, and just marching forward at different stages as well, kicked a brilliant point as well in the in the first half. So that was uh, very impressive. Dublin's bench has certainly come under fire, you know, and come under criticism a little bit from myself. Obviously, you know, following the Mead game, uh, you know, you would wonder do Dublin have the same options coming off the bench? And and those question marks are still there. Ryan Baskell did score a point, and I think Colin Baskell actually had the ball in the back of the net late on in the second half. And you were wondering as to why uh, that goal was actually disallowed they said too many steps couldn't quite see it uh, in my opinion but fair play you know he, he did score a goal and it was something but obviously it wasn't given so it wasn't uh yeah you know just looking at the bench again you know like tom lahiff came off um or t came on i should say sean bugler came on like the options just aren't quite there that were there in uh, in previous seasons and you know i like what i said before kildare very inaccurate in front of goal 36% accuracy in the first half. In the second half, it was probably even less, to be perfectly honest. So, like, Kildare were really poor in front of goal, and you would wonder, would a Mayo punish the dubs? Like, would they cause dubs more problems than what, uh, you know, Kildare have done here? Because the likes of your Tommy Conroy's, you know, the likes of your Ryan O'Donoghue's running at that Dublin defence, causing different problems, causing different issues. It would just give Dublin a, a different food for talk going into that all semi semi-final, and... Like, yeah, you know, there is an opportunity there for Mayo, I'm not going to lie. And as a Dublin fan, look, listen, in, in 2016, 2017, there were times in those games where you felt that Mayo were going to get the job done and they were going to get the victory. Um, 2019 and, and even last year, you never really felt like that. So I don't know, like, the, there is a chance there for Mayo. They don't have Killian O'Connor which uh, will be a, a big miss for, for Mayo. Maybe maybe he might be back by then, I don't know, but it's looking unlikely that he'll be back by uh by an All Ireland semi final, so certainly for Mayo, they'll, they'll look at this game and think they have a real opportunity. Kildare just nowhere near good enough in front of goal, and I think that was the the big issue. Dublin brilliant at slowing the game down, done what they needed to, got over the line, never ever really looked like losing the game, and uh, I think they learned their lessons a little bit from the Mead game. In the Mead game, they started to shoot from different angles. I think they felt like they had the game won when you know Mead started to come more and more into it and all of a sudden it was a three-point game and then Dublin started to slow the game down so I think they learned their lessons from that Mead game they took the sting out of the game they slowed the game down and in the end it was enough to uh, to get the victory so Dublin march on to an All-Ireland senior football semi-final against Mayo let me know down in the comments below what were your thoughts on the game uh, I, I do appreciate anyone who tuned into the live stream there unfortunately my internet is just having an absolute mare today so it wasn't meant to be there unfortunately but uh, we did get the recording done anyway so uh yeah leave a like subscribe if you haven't already my name is aaron and i'll see you all in the next one